Hey everyone, in today's episode, we're going to learn how to access and use the Corona Render Virtual Frame Buffer. To open the Corona Virtual Frame Buffer, we can press the Render button, run an interactive render, or open the Render Setup Scene tab, and under the General Settings section, press the Show VFB button. To save our images, we're going to press the Save button on the top panel. This is going to save the visible render element in this case, the interactive light mix. We can change the visible render element by pressing the drop down menu at the center of the panel. We're going to find that list of all the available render elements in this rendering. If we select the reflection pass and press the save button again, we're going to be able to save the reflection pass only. If we click and hold the save button, we can find two additional options, save all and save CHR. The Save All option is going to save all the render passes using our selected image format. With this option, the image are going to be named automatically with the render pass after the selected name. The other option, Save CHR, is going to save the render as a Corona EHR. This is an advanced image format that can be loaded into the Corona Image Editor by double-clicking the image or going to Program Files, Corona, Corona Render for 3ds Max Image Editor. You can find the link in the description below. Then double click the Corona Image.ext. This application has the same interface as the Virtual Frame Buffer, but when used with CHR format, it allows us to change the post effects and light mids of our images without opening 3ds Max. The next button, Max is going to duplicate the render in the 3ds Max frame buffer. The Ctrl plus C button is one of my favorite options for post-processing and quick revisions. It allows you to copy the selected image by pressing the button or pressing Ctrl plus C on your keyboard. After this, we can open a post-processing software like Photoshop and paste the image using Ctrl V in our keyboard. The refresh button can help us if the image is not updating properly after changing the geometry or seeing light. This is mainly used for interactive renderings. With the erase button, we can clear the frame buffer. Most of the time, we're going to use this option if we are doing region renders for different cameras. The tools button toggles the right panel on and off. This panel includes the post and light mid tabs. The Region button in Corona is one of my favorite tools for fixing mistakes in the image. It will allow us to draw one or more rectangles and only the pixels inside of the rectangle will render. We can move the rectangles to select different areas. Resize the rectangle by positioning the cursor next to one of the lines and also merge the rectangles if we move or draw them on top of each other. To remove a region, we can press the X button in the corner of the region. We can also click and hold the region button to get two additional options. The first one, Disable All, is going to allow us to temporarily disable all regions. After doing this, if we click and hold the button again, we can see that the button has been changed to Enable All, which is going to allow us to enable all regions. With the Remove All button, we can remove all the regions in the virtual frame buffer. The next button, Pick, is a really handy option. It will allow you to select objects directly from the virtual frame buffer. We just need to click the object in the render and it's going to be selected automatically. Next, to the render element drop down menu, we have a zoom in, zoom out, and zoom all buttons. We can stop the render by pressing the stop button. This is going to stop the rendering, but the denoiser is still going to be applied at the end. If we click the Cancel option, the render is going to be cancelled and no denoiser is going to be applied. The next option is the Render button. If we press this button, the final rendering is going to start using the selected render settings. If we click and hold the Render button, we can see three additional options. The first one is the Start IR. This option is going to start the interactive rendering. The next option, Resume Last, is going to restart the render from the last pass we render. And the last option is Resume File. This will allow us to open a CHR file and continue the render from this file. This is a great option if, for example, you need to shut down the computer 
If you want to know more about the resume last and resume from file options, you can see my resumable render video in this link. On the right side of the window, we have the Tools panel. The first tab is Post. In this tab, we can find some post-processing settings like Tone Mapping, LUT, Bloom and Glare, or Denoiser. In the Stats tab, we have four different sections. Each one is going to show us important information about the rendering, like the rendering time, estimated remaining time, the number of primitives or lights in the scene, and the total number of passes or noise level in the image. We can use this section to troubleshoot the render or to make improvements to the scene. In the History tab, we can store the current render. If we have more than one image saved, we can press the left-click mouse button to load the image in the A side and the right-click mouse button to load the image in the B side. Then, we can use the middle line to compare the renders. To clear it, press the Clear A, B button or delete the render history by pressing the Delete All button. The DR tab is only active if we are using distributed rendering. And the last tab is Light Meets. In this section, we can use the interactive light controls to adjust the intensity of color of the scene light. We can also find a couple of additional options for the virtual frame buffer in the Render Setup System tab. The first option is the clear VFB between renders. If this option is enabled, each time a render starts, the virtual frame buffer is going to be clear and it's going to start from a black color instead of the last render. This is a really useful option if we're using render selected or regions for animated cameras. The next option is the render stamp. If this option is enabled, we can see the render stamp at the bottom of the virtual frame buffer. We can type anything or use a special command. We can see the list of these commands by pressing the question mark button. For example, we can type something like my render file then use the command for camera, followed by the actual frame number. We can use the render stamps for troubleshooting or test renders. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to click the like and subscribe button. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. And thank you for watching.